Hello and welcome back. As I said, part two would uh, commence after me having something to eat and I've had my lunch and uh, we're back again, guys. And what did you think of the first one? But uh, welcome back and uh, I'm now going to continue with the playlist and find some more things. Got my television going instead of the uh, normal sound system. So it may be a little bit buggy, a bit, bit tiny, tinny in the background. So if that does annoy you, definitely let me know. So otherwise, guys, you can leave any comments while I draw for you guys. And uh, definitely check out to see how we got to this stage as uh, all different layers of uh, now. And we're quite kind of finished at the point where we're going, going to be. And uh, we're just go, sort of finishing up, putting some things on that, uh, put the wings on, and uh, sort of finishing up, finalizing those little details. Where is his body? 
and wearies his soul. Down in the pits of hell, demons hold up Logan's body to the devil, and the devil says that he's going to enjoy playing with his new toy. As time passes, Logan finds himself fighting off wave after wave of demons, all trying to wear him down. It could have been days, months, years, but either way, he can at least be himself here, and that's a killer. As Logan tears through the demons, he tells himself that he should be somewhat careful. His wounds are not healing as fast as they should be, and his claws are now bone instead of adamantium. As the last demon is cut down, the devil's voice can be heard laughing. <laughs> are you ready to give up yet? Because I have plenty more people who would love to see you. Logan looks at him and tells him, keep them coming, bum. More demons appear, and all of the people that Logan has killed in his past appear. But that doesn't stop him, because he rips through them all the same. The more of them that fall, the more appear. But there is one who really wishes to see Logan. A tendril claws out, grabbing Logan by the throat, and Omega Red tells him that he's going to make him suffer, just like he did his own friend. But Logan grabs the tendril, and flips Omega Red over it, and cuts through his torso. He screams out that they won't ever break me! And the demons continue coming, and they begin to overwhelm him. The devil begins to pull out a chain, telling Logan that he has so many more men who claim the same thing, but every one of them is broken down, including Sabretooth here. Up in the real world, Mystique pulls over and Melina asks, what exactly does she mean by Logan is in hell? Like the actual, literal hell, Melina takes her phone out and Mystique asks who she's going to call. And she tells her that she's calling the X-Men. Mystique tells her, don't do that. Her and the X-Men don't really mix well, so she calls them, count Mystique out. Elsewhere, a phone begins to ring. And Yukio picks it up, telling whoever is on the line to speak. Melina says that they have a mutual friend who needs help. And Yukio tells her that Logan always has a habit of falling for helpless women. What is a helpless American female? Melina goes on stating that this might sound crazy, but... And then before she can go on, Yukio hears a creak. And then a man slashes where she's sitting. She fights back and she kicks the hooded man. That's when she sees Logan's face dripping with blood. He holds out his arm, slamming Yukio into the ceiling. And then he brings her close. He holds out his claws and he stabs into her chest. Melina asks what's going on and Logan picks up the phone telling her, She's dead. Melina asks who is him and Logan tells her, Not anymore. The line then goes silent. Mystique looks back telling her, Told you. And Melita asks, what are they supposed to do? But Mystique tells her, they wait. For Damon and the Ghost Riders. Meanwhile, back in hell, Logan watches the demons bring out Mariko. He says that he will do anything, just don't hurt her. And the devil tells him, oh no, I'm not going to hurt her. She's going to hurt you. One of the demons hands Mariko a barbed flail. And she tells Logan that she's sorry. And she whips him with the flail. The barbs tear into his back and she tells him, please just give in. He doesn't answer her, and he screams out in pain as the bars continue to tear away at his flesh. Looking on, though, are two figures watching Logan's torture. The taller man says that he better not give in. If he does, the plan will go out the window. All he needs to do is talk to them. And the shorter man, Puck, steps out, stating that he's pretty sure he won't be having anything to do with them when he finds out who he is. But for now, he's got Puck to help him. As the beaters go on, the devil comes up with a better idea, and he releases Sabretooth. Logan laughs. <laughs> it looks like you finally found your place in life, Sabretooth. Guess cutting off your head was the best thing that could have ever happened to you, huh? Kree roars. And the devil tells him, that's enough. I have something else I would like to show you, Logan. More demons show up carrying someone as they get closer. Logan sees the silver samurai. The devil says that Harada here would like to tell him a few things. And Harada looks up, stating that it's because of him. This is all because of him. And then his head flies off. The devil picks up the head and crushes the body with his sword. He then holds the sword to Logan's face, telling him that this is the soul cutter. Wounds from it never heal. So either you break or I'm going to cut you into little pieces. Logan looks at him and spits in his face. The devil roars and slices down, cutting off Logan's ear. And he tells the demons to go ahead and nail Logan to something for a few thousand years. While Logan is taken away back up top, Mystique leads David to where Logan was taken away. Melina says that it was her, wasn't it? The one who lured Logan here. And Mystique tells her, yeah, there were some powerful people that hired her. She doesn't want to be a part of it anymore. Damon tells Melina that Mystique is telling the truth, at least on where it happened. But there is one thing that he wants her to understand. If they fail their attempts to exercise the demon out of Logan's body, they could be spending an eternity in agony beyond imagining. Is that something that she is ready for? Back down below, Logan stands nailed to a cross when he hears a voice. Puck tells him that he looks better. And Logan asks, what are you doing here? Puck explains, right now, if you want out, you need to keep holding out. The demons here are wanting to take over the throne there. And every time you defy them, the devil's grip loosens. So no matter what, don't break. Puck then leaves, and Logan hangs, planning his next move. 
His arms begin to flex and he screams as he pulls the nail out of the board in his hand. The demons all start chanting for Logan to fight and the devil asks, What the hell is going on? Soon the bodies begin to fall from the sky and the devil looks up to see Logan ripping the wings off of the flying demons. Then the devil shouts, This act is enough. It is time to end this. Logan tells him, Talk is cheap, Bob, so you better show me. And the two charge at each other. As they meet, they begin to swing and slash away at each other. And as the fight goes on, the devil cuts and slices into Logan, knocking him down. He then holds out his sword, telling him, This is goodbye. And Logan says, At least you proved one thing. That's that even the devil can bleed. Dripping off of Logan's claws is green blood. And the devil notices the cut on his face. The demons begin to rally. And Logan jumps up, punching the devil. Puck and the tall man watch. And the tall man says that it looks like things are at their tipping point. Puck tells the man that after that, he's going to get out of here. Meanwhile, up on top of the X-Men's Utopia, the possessed Logan begins his assault, attacking Colossus first. Colossus knocks him down, telling him, I would rather not have to hurt you. And Logan says, you must not know much about demons, huh? Speaking of, where is the little hell tease of a sister? Maybe she can enlighten you. Colossus grabs him and throws him back down to the ground, telling him, you will not speak of her. And then after throwing Logan out of the building, Colossus tells Kitty to go and get Scott. Before she can leave, Logan crashes back down, knocking Colossus through the floorboards. Logan stands there with his claws dripping with blood, telling him, Look, there must be something soft and squishy inside. The other X-Men run into hell, but as Iceman gets close, Logan breathes fire all over him. Angel runs up, but as Logan walks past him, his eyes begin to bleed. Logan walks back over to Colossus and he tells him, When I took this body, I made a pact to kill everything that Logan has ever loved. So now it's time to die. Back in hell, though, Logan continues chipping away at the devil, making cuts all over his face. And with one last attack, the devil pushes Logan down, breaking his bone claws. After pushing him down, the devil takes him. A sudden roar from behind the devil approaches, and he asks, Who dares? The demons then swarm around him. Topside was keeping the Ghost Rider's head into Utopia to find the possessed Logan standing over Colossus' dead body, and they pull him away. But down below, as the fight continues, Logan grabs a hold of his broken claws, and he uses them to nail the devil's body while the other demons flutter around. Now with the soul cutter out of the devil's hands, the demons begin fighting over the sword, and the devil tells Kree to hurry up and free him. But Kree growls and slashes away. As the demons all fight, Logan looks over and a voice tells him, If you're thinking of joining, don't. The man steps out and says that he would like to have a moment to talk to him. Man to man, father to son. Thomas Logan steps up and tells him, hello, son. Logan tells him that he is not his father, but Thomas tells him, I'm not mad at you for killing me and sending me here. It just took some years to figure out what you really were. But with all of this that is going on, me and Puck set it up. All I wanted to do was tell you that I'm proud of you. Topside, Mystique and one of the Ghost Riders drags the possessed Logan to the church that Demon told him to bring him to. And as they ride, Logan stabs his claws into the road, and he pulls back on the chain. The Ghost Riders fall off the bike, and Mystique sprays him with a holy water face. The Ghost Rider runs in, punching and headbutting, but Logan leans back, grabbing the skull and tearing it off of his body. He then takes the flaming skull, and he throws it at Mystique and stabs into her. Logan looks down, telling her, We are not the same Logan as you once knew. And Mystique tells him, it's true. You're stronger and faster, but you're still just as stupid. The other Ghost Rider blazes through, grabbing Logan's hand and flings him into the church. As his body tumbles and rolls in, Damon looks at him and tells him that it's time to send his ass back home. Back down below in hell, Logan says that he can't believe what he's hearing. And Thomas tells him, just believe it. Now go out there and be the something you were born to be. Over in the crowd of demons, Creed grabs a hold of the soul cutter, and then he charges in after Logan. Using his broken claws, Logan stabs into Creed's neck, and the two of them begin to struggle over the soul cutter. Logan fights into Creed's ear, and he rips it off his body, and then he takes the sword from his grip. Holding the sword, he tells Creed, this sword will make it so the wounds don't heal anymore. So, with one swing, Creed's head rolls off. Everyone watches stating no, but Thomas watches stating yes. We will all now bow before the new Lord of Hell. Thomas walks over to his son, telling him, You've done it. Hell is yours. Hell is ours. Together. And as Thomas reaches out to Logan, Logan tosses the sword back into the crowd of demons. Thomas shouts, You had it! You pathetic coward! And Logan turns back, punching Thomas Logan in the face. As Logan walks off, his father watches, stating, You'll be back. Some of the demons start to surround Puck, and Logan steps in with a barred flail, and the two start fighting the crowd back. As they clear a path to the wall, Logan and Puck begin to climb the walls of hell, and then Logan sees Mariko. Inside her cell, she wishes him speed on his journey, and Logan looks at her, telling her, That's crazy. You're coming too. She responds by telling them that they had their time together. This is where she belongs until she can redeem herself. So go. Logan reaches out to her, but Mariko tells him to just go. Don't look back. 
and Logan and Puck continue climbing as the demons beg to be let out. As they climb, one demon reaches out, grabbing Puck and pulling him back down. Logan tries to catch him, but Puck shouts for him to keep going. Logan climbs on, thinking to himself that the man down there is every bit his son, a killer, a walking, talking tragedy. And soon the light begins to shine, and the possessed Logan screams out in pain. Everyone looks at Logan's body, and Melina asks if it's working. She leans in, asking Logan to say something. Instead of an answer, Logan gets up and runs. Damon says that Logan's mind is still in turmoil. They need to catch him. And as they walk out, a voice tells them, I'm not sure what the hell is going on. And that's when everyone sees Logan stopped by Scott. He tells them, but this ends now. This might sound like it's wrapping up, but it's only beginning. Because this is the storyline that leads up to the death of Wolverine. And one of my favorite Wolverine storylines that did come out before he finally died. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I did. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get a whole bunch of Wolverine and Old Man Logan content. Because we've got a movie coming out. I don't know if you're aware of that. It comes out next week. Anyway, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Story so we can discuss how awesome that movie is probably going to be. And it was. <clears throat> Again, guys, just putting in the uh, bone wings, just putting them in the basic form now, but trying to keep them in a sort of a shape, same shape. Because I did like the design, so I'm going to keep that design and uh, continue on with uh, putting some more bones here and uh, colouring in the rest, I think, after I finish the wings. So uh, definitely, go, uh, guys, leave any comments that you wish and uh, let, let me know. If this is your first time at Comic Story, and then what we to make the Jewish recap your favorite comic books by bringing them to you in a series known as the Complete Story Series, where I take the core bits of the storyline, break it down, add in some dramatic music, funny voices, and then we dramatically read it back to you so you understand what happened. Today we're going to be continuing our story where last time, Wolverine was in hell. You see, Logan had his soul sent to hell by the organization known as the Red White Ant. After fighting the devil himself, Logan clawed his way back to the real world, but he was still possessed by the demons who took over his body. And just as the demons tried to escape, they ran Logan's body right to Scott Summers and the rest of the X-Men. With both Damon and his Ghost Riders, along with Scott and the others, Logan tries to regain control over his body. Melina slowly steps forward, asking if he's all right. And as she does, the demons take over, and they slash away at Melina's arm. Logan struggles, telling her, you need to run, just go. But soon the demons begin to take over once again, and they shout, there will be no more talking for who. And if we cut out the Wolverine's flesh, no one can. The demons begin forcing Logan into stabbing and ripping himself apart. The Mystique then asks, why isn't Logan back to normal yet? And Demon tells her that the spirits possessing him aren't giving up without a fight. Demons can kind of be like that. Scott asks Damon, what is going on? Has Logan killed anyone yet? And everyone remains silent. And Scott asks again. So finally, Mystique tells him, yes. Melita then asks, uh, please, Mr. Cyclops, these men have to finish what they're doing. It's Logan's only hope. But Damon says that he's afraid that they are finished. The spirits have dumped themselves in real deep, and now it's up to Logan to fight his way out. Inside of Logan's mind, he begins to wake up in a field asking, where am I? The demon horde looks over him, telling him, we hope you don't mind. We've made ourselves at home while you were gone. Logan looks around the field of ash, and the demons tell him, we hope you like what we did here. Logan then pops his claws, telling him, it's time for you to get the hell out of my head. Outside, everyone watches as Logan continues to struggle within his own mind. And Emma Frost looks in and says that it's like a psychic Armageddon in there. As she looks deep, she screams and falls back, stating the demons looked at her. It's like a pack of dogs running wild inside of her mind. There were so many different entities in there, far more than even she could count, all tearing him apart from the inside. Belita says that he can beat him. They just have to give him a chance, and Emma telepathically tells Scott that even with Logan's mental defenses, he won't last long against those things that are infesting him. Scott tells everyone to give Logan five minutes. Until then, no one touch or get near him. Namor then tells all of the civilians to go on and leave, and points to Damon, telling him, that includes you. Damon says, like how I'm leaving. If Logan wins, those demons will scurry out like cockroaches looking for a new place to hide. Places like inside of you. Soon the two groups begin arguing over whether or not they should be leaving, but Belina shouts at them to remember they are here to help Logan. Suddenly, everyone begins to hear demonic laughter coming out of Logan. <laughs> and the demons tell them, you are coming to see your friend, but instead, you're going to die by his hand. He pops his claws, and now the claws begin to burn with hellfire. And Scott tells Steven that if he wants to take point, then be his guest. Logan charges through one of the ghost riders, and he stabs his claws into the next. The demon tries to stop him with a fire blast, but Logan just turns grabbing him and throwing him into a traffic light. Scott gives the order for them to go, and Logan continues to destroy everything in his path. While everyone gets into position, Emma Frost tells Scott that he cannot be controlled anymore. He's already killed before, and he'll do it again. He would want him to end this. Scott brings him to Magneto and tells him to do it. 
out. So thank you because the lit Logan stated that he will try and make this quick. And Logan begins to scream! Inside Logan's mind, the team is being destroyed and setting everything on fire. His memories begin to burn as he runs through a graveyard where he buries his regrets. And then there's one place the flames haven't reached yet. A place where he will make his final stand. Logan makes his way inside and he suits up, but he's going to stand a chance he needs to let them out. He needs to let them all out. The team is begin forcing their way in, and Logan tells the rest of himself that if they die, they will die as one. And then all at once, Logan's inner personalities begin to tear through the demon horde. Back on the outside, Magneto begins to pull all of the iron out of Logan's body. He tells him that he takes no pleasure in doing this. And Logan tells him, that's too bad, because we certainly will. Logan reaches out, strangling Magneto until he's free. And as Logan begins to walk closer, he tells Magneto, I know you from somewhere, but where? Oh, where? Magneto grabs a sewer lid and breaks it down, shooting all the shards through Logan's body. And as he lays there, Logan tells him, you are much younger back when we met, but where? The demons begin to take off Magneto's helmet, and Logan says, There's gotta be something with that helmet blocking us out. Let me see. Suddenly, Magneto's vision begins to change, and before him stands a Nazi soldier, and the soldier tells him, That's right, this is where we met. Logan tells Magneto, You can sit there and cry now, but where is your other friend? Oh, never mind, here he comes. Namor charges through the traffic, grabbing Logan, launching the two of them into the sea. Scott and Emma head over to the shore, but as they get closer, Emma says that she can sense the water boiling. Logan is burning Namor underwater. Scott tells her to focus, and then she tells him that it's over. The two watch as Logan gets up onto the water surface, and he starts walking back towards them. As Scott charges in, he shouts for Emma to go to plan B. Go hold him off until they get here. So Emma makes a connection with Dr. Nemesis, asking if he copies. Nemesis tells her to quiet down. He can hear her without her shouting into his head, but they're on their way. Nemesis then asks Fantomax if he remembers the plan, and he responds, stating that if he's asking if he knows how to kill a man, he remembers. Back on the ground, Melita holds a gun to Emma, telling her that they're going to help him. They have to help him! And Emma tells her that she knows that this is difficult, but they don't have time to. And then she stops as Rogue and tells Emma that the girl's right. They're going to help Logan. All of them are. Over on the shore, Scott is firing blast after blast into Logan. And as Logan walks through it, he tells Scott, I know your fear is that I'm dying. It's a bad feeling. So the sad thing is, this is going to really hurt. Rogue jumps in, turning her hand into steel and punching Logan and telling him, yeah, he's right about one thing. Storm picks up Logan's body, and Emma helps Scott back up, stating that they're going to try one last desperate brain read, which means her mind guts could get ripped out. But then again, they wouldn't be very good superheroes if they didn't do something completely insane, right? Just make sure that if she goes brain dead, to pull a plug before her looks go. Storm then throws Logan's body down onto a nearby island, and Emma tells everyone that what they're about to do could leave them with a brain scramble. Rogue tells her that that's fine, just go ahead and take them inside already. Emma says they're going to need to get Logan close by, and then Storm tells her not to worry about that. She'll keep him in one place. Inside Logan's mind, him and all of his personalities continue to fight a losing battle. But suddenly Logan hears a voice. All of the girls charge in, and Emma says, What a surprise! This place smells like a burnt-out strip club, and it's time for us to get to work. But while the girls charge in and aid Logan in battle, there's another person wandering around inside of Logan's mind. The figure says that Logan will die here unless he opens up one last door, the one that he buried deepest under the ground. Nightcrawler says that he's sorry for doing this, this is the only way to save him from hell. But he pushes open the doors that have the Phoenix symbol hanging above them. Outside of Logan's mind, Nemesis and Fontomex arrive, and as they watch Storm, Nemesis says, that's his kind of woman. Fontomex says that perhaps they should focus on the task at hand. They do have a dear friend to kill. And as they get closer, Storm tells them to get back. She has this under control, interfering to put them in great peril. Nemesis fires his gun, telling her, never mind, she's too bossy for him. And the blast tears part of Logan's face away. So Storm asks him, what are you doing? And Nemesis says, shooting him in the face. She then and asks with what? And he says a little robotic plague, mouth cancer, a dash of flesh eating bacteria back inside Logan and the rest of them begin to fight off the demon horde. And while killing one demon, Malia tells Logan that she understands why he likes it so much. And Logan tells her, come here. And he kisses her. And Jubilee tells him that's right. But stopping to make out is not really helping out our situation. Bro calls out that they are losing too much ground and Logan tells everyone to get out. This isn't your fight. But before anyone can move, the ground begins to shake and tear apart. And as the dust begins to settle, everyone finds themselves in different parts of Logan's mind where he's locked things away. Emma looks at a door labeled Sexual Fantasies. And as she looks in, she says that she knows she's going to regret this. The door opens and Emma sees several women, one of which is her. She then asks where all the demons are at because she kind of needs to die this instant. 
Jubilee looks at another door and says that this is definitely not what the danger room was meant for. Rogue sees one labeled, How I Cheated Cards, and she shouts, I knew it! Up in the higher floors, the demons all begin to overwhelm Logan, and through them, a person jumps in, cutting the demons away. The arm reaches down to grab Logan, and he looks up, and he says, You're. And Nightcrawler tells him, Dashing, I know. But more importantly, I'm not alone. Logan looks over and says, It can't be. Everyone gathers around asking, is that? And Jean steps forward telling everyone, this is no time to talk. You almost plead to the safety of your own mind. The only thing that can save Logan's soul is the fire of the Phoenix. Jubilee asks if that's the real Jean, and Emma tells her no. It's just a chunk of Logan's subconscious that thinks it's Jean, but it's not really her. Logan tells Jean to get them out of here, and within seconds, the girls begin to wake up outside. As Jean begins taking care of the demon, she tells Logan that even though she's not the real Jean, she's real enough. And the only way to salvage what's left of his mind is to finally let her go. The demon starts to grab a hold of Jean, and she tells him there isn't much time. Outside, Nemesis and Fox are next try to keep Logan down. But as he walks through, he spews fire, knocking them away. Fox makes sense, and they should probably never do that again. And Nemesis tells him that he'll drink to that. Back inside, the demon begins bringing everything down. And Nightcrawler says that even though he is dead, he would very much like to not be ripped apart by the demonic force. Gene then asks why hesitate. Is there a reason that he wishes to live? And Logan looks at the door labeled, people that I have to kill before I die. And he tells her, you bet. Outside, the demons begin to weaken as Scott stands over Logan, telling him that he's sorry. But before he can fire, Logan falls to the ground, stating, Gene! And then the black energy begins to shoot away from Logan's body, and he hears the voices asking if he's okay. Logan gets back up and he tells everyone, I sure go for a drink. He'll look like fruits that I'll fire. Afterwards, he goes to see Colossus over in Utopia to make sure he's doing okay. But before leaving, Melita tells him that he doesn't have to do this, and Logan tells him to just stay here until he gets back. Scott then stops him asking if he's got a bit. Logan tells him not to worry. He doesn't blame him for what he had to do, and Scott tells him it's not about that. It's about Jean. He said her name just as he was waking up. Logan says now isn't the time for that. It's just something that he doesn't want to be a part of. Back inside of Logan's room to mind, everyone begins putting things back together. One of the personalities says one of the others said that there's something that they needed to do first before that. The personality asks who, and the other points at the berserker personality. The berserker begins writing something on the wall with blood, and then he steps away. They see Logan's next objective. The word revenge is written there. The story of the true Logan, the original Wolverine, is still ongoing. And if you want to keep up to date on that, then make sure you subscribe to the channel, because right now we're bringing you weekly Wolverine videos. But don't forget, we also bring you many other DC and Marvel-related comic books where we recap them and explain to you what is going on in these books. Also, don't forget, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, at Comic Story, where we can talk about the Logan movie or any particular comic book that you want. And I'll see you next time, right here. In our last video, Logan returned from hell, but he was still possessed by a group of demons. After fighting a war inside of his head from these demons, Logan finally managed to reclaim his body and drive them out. But even with that done, part of his mind was shattered. The first thing that came back was revenge. Welcome to the Complete Story series. We typically break the story down, give you the meaty bits, add in some funny voices and epic music and sound effects. I hope you guys enjoy it. All alterations of the male sex and images are to prevent copyright problems. And all art is filmed by its respective companies. Now, at the end of our last video, Wolverine vs. X-Men, Logan was finally able to put himself back together. And he set out to get the revenge that he needed against the Red Right Hand. But in order to find them, he needed to find the person who first betrayed him. Mystique. After tracking down some leads, he managed to find her, but she was already in a battle against the Red Hand's own assassin for betraying them. The three of them clashed, and Lord Deathstrike managed to wound Mystique so that she was unable to escape. With Lord Deathstrike's job done, all that was left was for Logan to kill Mystique. There was one pop of his claws. Mystique's body was left in the street while Logan continued his search for the Red Right Hand. With the information from Mystique and Maverick, Logan's search brought him to a home out in Mexico. He wastes no time ripping the door down and calling out that if nobody wants to die like dogs, they should come out and face him. As Logan walks through, a voice calls out telling him that everyone's right here waiting for him. They all have. Cannon foot then says that they all got to draw straws to see who would go first, and Logan tells him, you must have lost hump up. As Cannon foot tells him actually he won, he drops a steel ball down on his foot and he throws it at Logan's head. Cannabis then says he's supposed to leave some of it for the others, but he's thinking that maybe he'll just kill him right now. He grabs Logan and he throws him into a wall. All the while, the red right hand watches. Some of the members stay to this. I'm leaving space between it, guys, because uh, what I want to try to give the effect of is it's not quite there, and it's uh, 
well, it's appearing, but it's not uh, all, you know, the flesh, there's no connecting parts, it's just an entity holding up some moves. He did run into trouble when his workers down in the coal mine went on strike, began to organize a union. The boy's father dealt with the unruly workers, and they brought in a man, a negotiator of sorts. And that was the day that the boy saw something in his father that he had never seen before. Fear. Fear destroyed the boy's father. And just as he had rock bottom, the negotiator came and killed him. The boy watched as the negotiator murdered his own father. And then he told the boy that he knew that someday he'll want to try and kill him, but don't. Just move on with his life. The boy didn't. He grew up building back up his father's legacy. And once he managed to put everything back into place, he hunted down that negotiator. The man's name was James Howlett. And now the young man shot and killed the James while he was drunk and stumbling in the streets. Except James didn't die. The young man woke up the next morning bloody and bruised. And then he put everything in his life on hold to kill James Howlett. Over and over again he tried, each time failing. And that's when he realized that he may be doing this all wrong. He sought out the help of others who had been wronged by James Howlett. And in the current time, the leader, now an old man, watches as Cannonfoot screams in pain. And Logan asks Cannonfoot, what are they going to call you now without a foot? Logan then turns back to the cameras watching him and he asks, who else do you have? Suddenly, Logan is cracked across the head, and a woman calling herself the Shadow Stalker tells him that his blood tastes so sweet that she might freeze it and make popsicles out of it with a pop of his claws. Logan charges back in, telling her, you can lick these. Shadow kicks Logan before he can get to her, and then whips the spiked flails in her hair, slicing through Logan's neck. He gets back up, blood pouring all over it, and Shadow presses herself against it, stating that she thought his claws would be much bigger. After smacking her one more time, Shadow leans against Sadie as she just wants one kiss to give him a bit of pleasure amidst the suffering. Logan leans in, fighting away the side of her face as she pushes him back. And as she does, she notices that Logan has ripped the flail. All right, okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to put everything back now. He gets up and he looks I'll around take it away, and he's in some sort of museum. All of the things that belong to him or involved him. Shadow walks through telling him that she hates to break it to him, but she's had better than him, and she charges back in. It doesn't take long as the red right hand watches as Logan kills Shadow and destroys everything that belonged to him. He steps out of the hole shouting, if you're still here, I'm coming for you. Logan continues to make his way through the hole. Until he so we're getting there. Him. Maybe I need to, uh, there's tools, a few bits and bobs here, a bit of Shadow on the actual, um, skeleton himself. I might do a little bit shading on the cross behind it. But again, like I said, the cross is only there for back. Excuse me. Only there for background. It wasn't really there for anything other other than that purpose. Another nose is having put the uh, color in the hood. What an idiot! In a second. He pulls the burning blade out of his back and he cuts through it. He then tells Fire and Saw to just walk away. Fire looks up stating that if there's a time to say over my dead body, this would totally be that time. The two stab their weapons into each other. But Logan continues on. Back with the red right hand. One of the men shouts that this isn't enough. He needs to suffer like they did. He has to know why. But as the man makes his way through the crowd, the leader tells him that he knows the rules. And that the man is shot in the head. The leader tells everyone that they need to stick to the plan. Let them all remember that. Everyone turns to the camera and sees Logan and he tells them, Who dies next? The leader turns to Gunhawk and he tells them, It's up to you now. Hopefully you'll fare better than the dearly departed. Gunhawk pushes open the doors to see Logan standing in the hallway. Logan tells him that his friends talked to Big Game, but that didn't keep them from time. So what about you? Gunhawk looks at him without saying a word, draws his guns and he gets on fire. Logan walks through the shot, and as he gets closer, he slashes him away at one of Gunhawk's arms. Though Gunhawk manages to get a hit in, Logan rushes forward, stabbing it to him and throwing him to the ground. Logan asks, they should be right through that door, right? And as he spits up blood, Gunhawk tells him, yeah, you really shouldn't go through it now. Logan looks down, telling him that if there's more like him on the other side, he'll take his chances. Their plan to kill him hasn't exactly worked out yet. Gunhawk struggles, telling him that that's where he's wrong. The plan was never to kill. And inside the room, the leader tells everyone that everything is set. It's time for them to welcome their guest of honor. Back outside, Gunhawk says the plan was only to make him hurt. What's behind the door? There's a whole lot of that. Before pushing open the door, Logan asks, Do I know you or something? And Gunhawk tells him no. You don't know me at all. And then he draws his final breath. Logan pushes open the doors and he says, Yeah, a whole lot of hurt is here. It's coming in right now. Inside the crowd toasts, To revenge! And they all begin to drink, one by one. They then begin to fall, dying from the poison that they just drank. The leader says they will all die well with victory in their hearts, to die with a smile. But before drinking his glass, the leader notices that one of them is not drinking, and he asks, Why are you waiting? 
The young boy says that he wants to see his face when he realizes what they've done. The leader places his hand on the boy's shoulder and he tells him that he understands. But now is not the time for regret. Now is the time for us to rejoice. He then takes his drink and he falls over. Just then, Logan bursts into the room and he sees everyone dead. He walks through and he says, it's a damn shame. Hope they all enjoy hell as much as I did. And then the monitor turns on and the leader says, Oh God, I'm deleting things. If you're seeing this, that I wonder it's not working. I'm pretty sure that there are plenty of unanswered questions and why we went to such lengths to make you suffer. Though I regret that I will not be able to tell you face to face, we thought that it would be best to deprive you of the joy of actually killing us. The answers of who we are rest inside of the book that we left behind. And inside are all of the faces of the people who are precious to us. Fathers, mothers, wives, sons, daughters. No. They need to um... revenge the things that you've done. Which is why we sent you to hell and attacked those close to you. However, our mission isn't done. In order to get there, we had to kill five people. Those five are known as the Mongols, and there are also files about them that you may find interesting. Logan begins to open up the folder and he begins to read, and the leader goes on stating, We spent years studying you, some our entire lives, and during that time, we found things that even you may not know. We know everywhere that you've been and everything that you've left behind. Logan tells him, This can't be true. The leader continues to state, We searched the globe for these five. We trained them, and we knew that they could never win. In fact, we wanted them to lose, to die specifically by your hand. And why would they do that? Because they were his children. He then finally tells Logan that now, finally, he is like them. So let him welcome James Howlett to the red right hand. The screen shuts off, and Logan drops the book. And the young boy looks up laughing, seeing the look on Logan's face as he falls over from the poison. Slowly, all of the members of the red right hand begin to wake up at the burning fires of hell. And the leader sees his father, and he hugs him, telling him that he finally did it. Everyone starts running to their loved ones, and the young boy stands there calling to his mother. But the mother never comes. The story of Wolverine and hell and his revenge is still ongoing. So if you want to know what happens next, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to check out the entire playlist of Wolverine videos, Old Man Logan, and X-23. And I'm also on Twitter and Instagram to chat about things. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you next week right here. Right, what we're going to do now, guys, is just add in a few bit more um, details, such as uh, glowing eyes and sort of a little bit of shade to the bones, and as much as I can, really. I don't want to shade too much on the clothing, as uh, I'm trying to make it transparent. And all art is owned by its respective companies. Now, in our last Wolverine video, Logan finally managed to track down the location of the red right hand after killing Mystique. Once at the hideout, Logan fought and killed a group known as the Mongols, and he found out that they were in fact his children. The leader and the rest of the red right hand then poisoned themselves before Logan had a chance to kill him, ultimately denying him the satisfaction of killing the leader. After the deaths of all of his illegitimate children, Logan returned to visit his old mentor, Master Poe. While there, Logan helped Poe clean out the triad gangs that ran the streets of Chinatown, and in turn, assumed the role of the Black Dragon, becoming the leader of the Chinatown organized crime. But with Logan not living up to his role of the Black Dragon, there was another murder in the Chinatown of San Francisco. Now, if you're wondering if we missed that storyline, maybe we'll go back and cover it. But from what I can tell with the publication history, the storyline did go with Wolverine going to hell, fighting against the Red Right Hand and doing all of that. The storyline that this is relating to where Logan became the leader of the Black Dragon is apparently a storyline that came up before the new run where he went to hell called Manifest Destiny. I will link them both down below. It seems like the publication history is a bit off, but it looks like that in this storyline, after he took care of the Red Right Hand, they kind of went back to resolve things that have been left open from the storyline prior to this. It's still a fun story, though. It's Wolverine. Now, over in Melita's apartment, she asks Logan if the rumors of him leaving San Francisco are really true. He tells her, actually, I've already left. I just came back here to get a few things and say goodbye. Melita asks if he was ever planning on asking if she'd like to come with him. And so he does. She tells him that she's not sure. Lately, she's been getting a lot of job offers as a journalist. Logan tells her that he understands. There are things out there that they both have to do. And one of them for him is to go back to Westchester and rebuild that school. Melina hugs him, asking how is he going to pay for all of this. He practically lives out of a paper sack. He says that he has money. He just chooses to live this way. As Logan turns to leave, Melita stops him, telling him that even if they're not going to be together for a while, it doesn't mean that he isn't supposed to kiss her. And as they do, Melita notices a young boy staring at them through the window. 
The boy lets himself in, telling Logan the people were starting to think that the black dragon was dead. Logan tells him that he's been a bit busy. Molina asks who this is, and the boy opens up his vest, showing off his trinkets, telling them that his name is Yuri Yi. Does she want to watch the diamond earrings? Maybe he use switchblade? Logan says that this is his friend from Chinatown, and Yuri tells her that that's right, and now it's time for them to go back there so he can take care of his responsibilities. Logan tells Molina that he'll explain later, and Yuri nudges him to hurry up and kiss her. They gotta get moving. A little while later, Logan and Yoon walk into the destroyed bar known as the Drunken Mantis, and a voice calls out that their esteemed Black Dragon returns. Logan bows and tells him that he apologizes, that he has neglected his responsibility, and he humbly resigns his position. Poe tells him, oh no, 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 you don't get out that easy. You need to go out and clean up this mess. There's a drug war going on, even though it doesn't look like there is much of one by the scene. There is a new player in the field that no one knows of. Logan starts to look around, and Poe goes on to state that these men in these masks came looking for him. But as Logan reaches the back, he sees his safe where he kept all of his money has been broken into. Logan looks back to Poe, and he tells him that he needs his money back. And Poe says that he needs his streets back, so Logan grinds his teeth, and he tells Poe, Fine, just show me who to stab. Later over in the warehouse of the docks, a guard hears a knock at the door. The man goes to look at the peephole, and then they hear a sound of Logan's claws pop and shoot through the door, stabbing into the man. He then bursts through the door, and he runs through cutting and ripping apart any guard who even looks in his direction. Poe begins to investigate the warehouse and finds that the whole warehouse is a storehouse for heroin. But the big problem is, how are they moving this massive amount of drugs? Logan looks back at one of the fallen guards, and he asks Poe if he has any idea who these people are. Poe mentions that they do have the mark of the claw on their chest. And Logan says, claw, as in. He stops and he sniffs the air, and suddenly from the shadows, a giant figure jumps in saying, claw, as in Jade Claw. Gorilla Man leaps in front of everyone, telling him, I was just about to find out how they were moving this stuff until you showed up. The two begin to argue in each other's face until Gorilla Man starts to beat his chest roaring. While the two continue to yell at each other and then begin to fight, Poe finds a switch to a secret stairway and tells them that when they decide that they want to be useful, he already found where they all need to go. Gorilla Man says their fight will be continued later, and they all sneak down into the lower levels, where Poe mentions that something is wrong. Yoon asks how could a bunch of drug dealers make a tunnel this big, and Poe tells them that the drug dealers didn't. These red dragons hauling the drugs did. Logan asks how far do these tunnels go, and Poe says all the way back to the mother land. Gorilla Man stops them and asks if this is literally a tunnel to China because that would be insane. And I'm a talking gorilla. While the group talks, one of the dragons overhears them and even before they can move a voice calls out, welcoming the black dragon. A group of assassins led by Soul Striker steps out from the back, stating that they are grateful that they have saved them the trouble of tracking him down. As all of the assassins move around the group, Gorilla Man asks if it's too late to back out of their team up. Within seconds, Fist begin to fly as Logan and Gorilla Man charge in, swinging at anything that moves. Soul Striker punches the Gorilla Man and he asks, Why are they calling you that? As Soul Striker's fist punches through his chest and he screams in pain, telling him, Okay, I get it now. A group leaves at Yoon, asking if he's really going to show them his Kung Fu. So he pulls out a gun and shoots them and tells them, That's right, because all Chinese know Kung Fu, you racist pig. As everyone continues fighting, one of the dragons leans in and opens its mouth to breathe fire down the entire cavern. While Soul Striker shouts to leave their souls for him, Poe leaps in, kicking and punching him. He then looks down, telling him, You have dishonored yourself by using these noble dragons. But as he says that, Striker asks, Noble, you say? And a dragon snorts right behind Poe, and Soul Striker tells him, you don't know much about these dragons, then. Moments later, Soul Striker shouts, That's enough! I've captured Poe and you. If you wish for them not to die, then you will stop. Logan throws his hands up and tells him, Fine, we give up. And Gorilla Man asks, What the hell? Where does that leave us? But after he and Logan are strapped to two dragons ready to be ripped apart, he says, It leaves us here. How silly of me. Logan shouts to Soul Striker that when he gets out of this, he's going to take his other hand. And if he asks nicely, his head too. Soul Striker tosses Poe down into the pit, saying, Yes. Well, they both seem to be working just fine, so I have other places to go. So even if by some miracle you get free, you can have fun wandering these caves until you starve to death. After Soul Striker and the rest of his group leaves, the two dragons begin walking apart, and Logan shouts to Gorilla Man to hurry up. Gorilla Man finishes untying his feet and says, Having a boastful big toes, huh? Bet you wish you had them right now. As Gorilla Man unties Logan's arms, the one dragon holding them begins running off, dragging the boat behind it. But then the dragon suddenly stops after something punches it. A voice calls out that at long last, someone has come to rescue him. He welcomes them with a hug of a thousand thanks. That person steps out and says, Oh, you have brought me food! Meanwhile, elsewhere in the caverns, Yuna looks out of the vast poppy field, asking if that is really a poppy field at the center of the earth. Jade Claw tells him, Actually, 
and say we'll decide the Australia. Chinatown is but the first inroad. But soon the world will pay my price for the privilege of buying my drugs. So while everyone fights amongst themselves up top, she will stay down here and rule the world from down below. And Yoon says, actually, that's a pretty awesome plan. Maybe reconsider your whole concubine thing you got going on then? Back with Logan, Fat Cobra grabs Logan and squeezes him for a hug, shouting, My old friend has come to save me! After letting him go, Logan looks at Fat Cobra and he asks if he knows him. And he tells him, of course, I am Fat Cobra, though you may not recognize me due to practically fading away into nothing down here. Gorilla Man then asks, how did he get lost down here? Fat Cobra tells him, the oracles of Heng Lao warned me of a deep trouble within the earth, and I got lost on my way down. Since I got lost, I've been reduced to a diet of cave moss and warm puddled water. And three days ago, an entire dragon, but come, if we can make it out of here, we have all the food, wine, and wenches that we can ever want. As the three move on, they see three dragons pass by, and Gorilla Man says that if there's a base in this maze, they might be the key to leading them right to it. Without a word, Fat Cobra jumps out shouting to the dragons, prepare to be eaten! And Logan and Gorilla men soon follow. While they all battle against the giant dragons, Logan says that he has an idea of how they can get into their base, but they might not like it. A short while later, the three dragons make their way back towards the Jade Claw Palace, when suddenly from one of the dragon's stomachs, a man vomiting can be heard. And from another stomach, Logan asks, what was that? And Fat Cobra shouts that he just ate a part of an apple that he found in here, and it did not seem to sit well. Oh hey, there's another apple. The three dragons walk through the gates to the hidden base, and Soul Striker stops them, shouting, what are you doing? You're all a bunch of lazy, bloated bees. And all at the same time, the three dragons of vomit onto him. Through the vile, Gorilla Man says, I'm not sure who to kill first, the bad guys are Logan. Logan pops his claws and says, it might be best to go with them. After getting up from the pile of dragon stomach full, Gorilla Man asks, what's the plan? And Logan says, a bunch of stabbing. So Gorilla Man tells him, right, bravo plan, General Patton. Soul Striker shouts for everyone to get them, and the three quickly jump into battle. Out of the fields, the guards all look around the palace to see what's going on. And you and it knocks one down with a sack of poppies. He then takes a gun and fires at the rest of the guards, telling the other slaves to follow him to freedom. Though a word of warning, the economy up top really sucks, so being an opium slave might be a better job. When Gorilla Man runs and knocks everyone around him out, Fat Cobra tells him that his monkey style needs work, to which Gorilla Man tells him, You can kiss my ass. Through the crowd, Soul Striker tells everyone to leave Logan alone. He will kill them alone. And Logan says, It's nice to know that you care that much about me. Soul Striker tells him, I'm gonna beat your soul into a quivering pulp. Logan laughs, Take your best shot, bub. Soul Striker pulls his arm back as it begins to glow, and he punches straight through Logan's chest. He then steps back in pain, asking, How are you still standing? Logan tells him, I may have toughened up a little bit since we last met. That, and I've been through a whole hell of a lot of bad things. So some one-armed joker who hits like a girl isn't doing any damage. As the fight goes on, there's a sudden blast of fire covering the entire area, and everyone looks up to see the dragons. As you can tells him they're all sorts of different layers now. Said maybe they should offer the dragons the fat guys so that they can escape. But and I'm just sort of going over them now. Oh, and checking them all, checking them all good. Making sure everything sort of fits where it should do. After the dragons all finish torching the ground, Logan and Poe walk up to a smoldering soul striker and Logan tells him, Jay Claw's finished. Then I reckon you know what's coming next. With one quick slice, soul striker's remaining arm flies through the air. And Logan says, you punched your last soul. Poe stands before soul striker and he tells Poe, surely you wouldn't hit a man with no arms, right? Poe says no. So he kicks him in the face. Back topside, everyone sits in a bar and Poe finishes the story saying how he said, but I kicked the living crap out of him. Everyone at the bar laughs and drinks. Logan asks Poe, how is it that he escaped? Poe says that, well, he fell into the Earth's molten core where he landed in a dragon nest. Gorilla Man stops him, telling him that he's going to need another beer if he's going to listen to this. And at another table, Fat Cobra asks you what kind of perks does being the Black Dragon include? And if he's unclear, by perks he means witches. As Logan drinks his beer, he asks Gorilla Man what happened to Jade Claw. And Gorilla Man smiles, telling him, oh, last time I saw her, she was on her way back to China being chased by a few dragons. A voice then asks Logan if she can buy him another round seeing as how she's now employed. Logan looks up at Melita and says, Daily Bugle now, huh? And she says, yeah. Funny thing is, she never applied to them. He then says, that's really strange. Must have been one of her admirers who submitted her resume then. Melita goes back to look around at all of the people and says that she can tell that he got his money back. But dare she ask who all of these people are? Logan says that he would prefer she not, and Melita says that there's a gorilla drinking. Are gorillas even supposed to drink? Logan laughs, telling her that he's not sure, but they're going to let him. Elsewhere, though, three figures all stand before a board full of pictures, and one says that the pieces are all falling into place, while another says, yeah, but in all the wrong ways, sadly. The last one says, for one, a lot of people are being killed, and they're going to have to swallow their pride and face the last guy on Earth that they ever wanted to see again.
Now, this kind of kicks up the next series of Wolverine storylines, because the first one with the hell stuff and him killing his illegitimate children, that, that wrapped up. That's pretty much done. And then this wraps up a storyline that was happening up before all of that. So the next part, we're going to move on to him battling against an individual. There's Dr. Rot. Wolverine had some crazy storylines. Some crazy, interesting stuff happened, and I hope you guys enjoy it. But if you want to keep the date on the Wolverine storyline, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can get all your favorite comic books recapped in epic and dramatic manners. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Story, where we can talk about your stuff. Marvel has a line of comics that they don't normally touch on known as Max. In Max, it's no holds barred. They allow swearing, nudity, and basically blood and gore. So today we're going to be covering Wolverine Max Volume 1. And I'm going to tell you right now, we've censored quite a bit. I hope you enjoy Wolverine just unleashed and slightly censored. Across the Pacific Ocean, a plane goes down in a fiery blaze. Logan, the man known as Wolverine, pulls himself up above the water trying to find something that he can float on. But as he kicks his legs, all he can feel is pain. He then realizes that he just lost his legs in the explosion. He manages to grab onto one of the wings of the plane and he starts to hear another voice. A woman struggling to keep herself above water. He tries to swim over to help, but as he does, a shark begins to smell the blood of the water. And it attacks the woman. As the body is pulled away, Logan pulls out his claws and he hacks away at the shark until there is nothing but a bloody mess floating. As he floats on, he thinks, kill. It's always been kill. Hunt, fight, kill, drink, repeat. That was until someone told me that if I wanted peace, I had to head west. Back in the current times, Logan is fished out of the ocean by the Japanese search and rescue team, and they ask him if there are any more survivors. He struggles to stay awake, telling the man, asking him no. The man then says it's a miracle that he's alive. He hopes that he's ready for some attention, though. He's about to be a celebrity. As Logan is taken away by a helicopter, the medical staff begin to ask Logan if he remembers anything. What happened? What is his name? Logan tells them that he doesn't know, and one of the staff members then pulls out a passport from his pocket. It says that his name is John Grant, and his plane was heading to L.A. Later in Tokyo, the medical staff rushes Logan into the hospital, where Inspector Nakano stops them, stating that he has a few questions first. Logan says that he can't remember anything, and Nakano says, well... We're in the process of getting the plane's black box. He then lifts the lower end of the blanket, stating that there's something that he's curious about, though. The report said that the survivor had his legs set. Logan nervously tells him, uh, it must have been a mistake. And Nakano says, well, you are the only witness, so we'll have to have you stick around. A short while later, Logan stares out of his room window, thinking that his body doesn't seem like it needs healing. Legs growing back and claws coming out of his hands. Maybe this was all a dream. As he closes his eyes, the dreams take him back to a long time ago. He was a monk seeking peace in his life when he appeared. The man told him that he's heard about him, the things that he did in Canada. The two of them are a lot alike. Logan told him that it was impossible. There was no one else like him. Now he must hurry to go chant. The man says that it looks like he's going to have to show him. And he punches Logan across the yard into a tree. Logan picks himself up asking, who the hell is he? And the man lifts his hat, telling him, I'm your soulmate. By the way, my name is Victor. As Logan wakes back up, he steals some clothes and sneaks out of the hospital undetected. A short while later, he gets a motel room to try and figure out what's going on. And he watches the news about the plane crash. The news reports that there were 376 on board. 375 died. And the person of interest is is the miracle man who escaped police custody. But as Logan watches, he sees the surveillance video of him boarding the plane with the same woman that he was trying to rescue in the water. And the more he watches, the more he remembers that he was boarding the plane with that woman. And his name isn't John Grant. It's Logan. But what he doesn't see is the SWAT team sitting outside of his room. It only takes seconds for the SWAT team to move in, but just like an animal, Logan can sense the danger. And he's already one step ahead. He escapes to the bathroom window and his body does the rest, popping out his claws, climbing up the side of it. The police tell Logan to freeze and they fire a shot into his leg, but he claws his way to the top and over the wall. He quickly grabs more clothing and begins to blend into the crowd, trying to piece together everything that's happened. He has no memories aside from his name. He's a suspect in a plane bombing, and all he has is John Grant's wallet. He pulls up the wallet to see a picture of the woman that he was with. Was she a girlfriend? A wife? Why are there so many business cards for the same restaurant in Rock Pompey? And with that being his only lead, he heads over to the restaurant. But the moment that he walks in, the host welcomes him back as Mr. Collinsworth. And they just heard that the plane crashed going to L.A. and they were all worried about him. He then asks if Yami is okay. And Logan says, uh, yeah, she's uh, safe at home. The man asks, really? I didn't see her come in. Unless she meant home as in Kanagawa. Logan says, all right, she went home there. But do you have a spare key to my apartment? The host tells him, of course. Let us get that quite away. A few moments later, Logan is walking into his apartment. 
sensing that things have happened here, things with Yami. There's something out of the ordinary. But before he can wonder any further, faint sounds of sirens can be heard and he begins to pack up. There's something out of the ordinary here, something that's safe behind all of these clothes. He thinks to himself that if he had gone to the trouble of putting a safe in here, there must have been a reason for it. He cuts through it, opening it up, and then he finds several different IDs and a lot of cash. He heads to the train station to get a ride to Kanagawa, and as he sits there, he wonders, who is this girl? And for that, who the hell is he? As soon as he closes his eyes, the images of the past begin to flood back. There was a beautiful woman by the name of Mariko, and she could tell that Logan was different from every other samurai. As they parted, Victor was also there teasing him for actually talking to a girl for once. However, he didn't just come to banter, he came with an offer. Well, more like a job for them. Machiako is helping the Shogunate clan with a war that they're having with the Yashida clan. And Victor Creed is working for Machiako. Creed explains that the Yashida clan deserves this. They are a group of rapists, killers, and thieves. And he's paying in gold. He's going to need the money if he wants to keep a one like Mariko, right? So how about we go have ourselves a good old-fashioned fight? In the blink of an eye, Logan sees himself back in the current time period, at the train station watching the news. A little to go on, he heads to the local bar, asking the bartender if he's ever seen this girl. Her name is Yami. The bartender tells him to get out before he gets his ass kicked out. And Logan asks, oh, by who? A group of men behind Logan says by them, and if he doesn't get out of here in the next few seconds, he's going to be dead. Logan tells him that he's trying to find the family of a friend who died today. Two of the men grab Logan, telling him time's up. And the third asks if he's ever seen what nunchucks could do in the face. Logan cuts up the face of the two men holding him, and he asks the third if he's ever seen what these could do to a face. So after getting the information that he needed, he heads down to the address provided by the thug. As soon as he knocks on the door, Yami's parents tell him to go away. They're trying to grieve. And Yami's brother Katsu steps out, telling him, Wait, I know who this man is. He was on the plane with my sister when she died. Did it? She died in pain. Logan thinks back to the shark eating Yami and tells him, No. It was quick. He tries to explain that he lost his memory and he's trying to find answers. But Katsu tells Logan his only advice is to leave the city because he may have been the one who set the bomb off. Logan then leaves thinking that he couldn't have set the bomb off. Could he? As Logan goes back to wondering, he passes a structure that reminds him of the monastery that he stayed back then. At that time, 150 years ago. However, a voice can be heard telling him to run. He's coming. Logan turns back to see Yami's brother Katsu beaten and bloody and Logan asks who. And Katsu tells him, Greed. Images begin to flash before Logan of a time back before this moment. Back when he fought against the Yashida clan. Him and Creed slaughtered mostly everyone, but Logan stomped and argued that they didn't need to go this far. They didn't have to kill these monks. As the two of them fought back and forth, one of the monks says that they can kill their bodies, but they cannot kill their honor. Creed grabs the man called Shingen's head, telling him that that's a real shame. And he cuts his head off. Creed then holds the head up, drinking the blood from the neck, asking Logan if he wants to come. Logan shouts that he is not like him. But Creed picks up the sword that they were coming for, stating, We both know how absurd this is. We're one of the same in everything. You don't realize that yet. Back in the present day, Logan holds Katsu's body, thinking that it wasn't a dream. These are memories. He then asks, What is it that Creed wants? And Katsu struggles, telling him, Yeah, accuse him. Play Exotica. As he passes away, Logan then says that that can only mean one place. The strip club. Exactly. Okay, I think I'm pretty much done now, guys. Going to a point where I can't really be, do much more to it. If I do, it'll just be like little tweaks here and there. A little artist thing that you get to a point where you think, well, yeah, could just put a bit here or a bit, a bit more here sort of thing. Maybe if I just tweak this bit, then you never get done. And as I wanted this to be done today. I'm going to leave it here and say thank you very much, guys, for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed this month's theme. And if you want to see more from this theme, check out other videos from this month. And uh, thank you very much again for watching all of this, if you've made it this far. However, the sword taken was a sacred Yashida tradition. They believed they would bring them good fortune. She assured that her father fought to the And uh, don't forget to check out all Steve. the other videos. Logan Tonight will be the continuation of uh, the Wolf Among Us. As uh, ordered to get that done as a Halloween special. And that will be the game I'll be playing tonight. And hopefully you will guys enjoy that. And definitely, as always, don't forget to uh, check out the other videos from that series so you guys can catch up. And uh, keep up with what is going on. And as always, I've been Blute084.
B L U T zero eight four Hawk and Games here every day on YouTube, occasionally on Mixer, but every day and night over on Instagram. Again, thank you very much, guys, for watching. And I'll see you next time. For the next, for next month's theme, check out tomorrow as the first video will be started and continue on till next week. Otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you, hopefully you have a good Halloween, and I'll see you. I'm a good friend. I'm Next time. The cops. I'm here to protect you. Logan begins to pick himself up, stating, Wait, if I was working for the Yakuza and breathed on the plane, why did we attack the club? Logan tells him, Because you were a secret operative. Logan didn't work for the Yakuza. You worked for Victor Creek. Just like back in the day when we fought against the enemy clan, I brought you in. Logan lunges at Creek, chatting, I would never work for an animal like you. And Creek tells him, Go on. 